How are you going? Global warming is starting to ever so slightly change the world around us. Like this fire that kind of lightly toasted this rainforest that used to be here for 10 million years. And you know what I think? I reckon it could actually be a good thing. But some of you disagree and you point your ugly dirty fingers at the adorable little companies and countries that are just innocently borrowing resources from the ground, transforming them into amazing products that are very necessary to our lives. And yes, in the process they release small amounts of harmless gas into the atmosphere, which ever so slightly turns up the thermostat of the earth. But what are they meant to do? Stop. No. Could you personally tell this cute little man to stop turning up the thermostat? Could you? Could you tell little Bobby? I know I couldn't. And besides, I kind of like my koalas crispy, my seals slippery, and my children choosing cobalt for cars in the Congo, thank you very much. It teaches them discipline. And besides, I've got a better solution. We let the global warming fueled apocalypse happen, and we also let an Australian YouTuber who knows nothing about survival teach the whole planet how to survive. It's a win-win situation for, for me and Bobby. So the foreplay for the apocalypse has started, and it's getting hot. Some of the first things to go are our normal food supplies. Supermarkets, grocers and mackers have all melted and people across the world are starting to freak out. Except the Russians, as their country is finally a pleasant temperature. Солнце! Это красиво! So what are you going to do? First step. You could take advice from survival expert Nelly and take off all your clothes. I am getting so hot, I'm going to take my clothes off. And then you should probably start utilizing the massive amounts of waste created by our ancestors in order to survive. You know, some people say that it's a bad thing that we've covered the earth in plastic, which takes hundreds of thousands of years to break down. But it's actually pretty convenient. It means that everywhere you look, like inside this bird, a blue whale, or even at the bottom of the Marianas Trench, you can always find useful plastic and with the right knowledge units, you'll find that you can do a lot more with plastic bottles than just making bongs. So this first hot life tip comes from Russian YouTuber Advoko Makes, who loves jumping on chairs just as much as I do. And he created a pretty cool tool that allows you to turn plastic bottles into rope. Now I'm gonna make a simplified version of his device as I'm a simple man. And all you'll need for mine is a wooden plank and a razor. Now this will only work if you buy a razor that exactly aligns with your sexual orientation, like Gillette's Fusion 5 Pro Shield for men, or Schick's Intuition Fab Razor for women that want heavenly skin. I was a little unsure, but then I grabbed the most popular one, Gillette's Turbo Mac 3 Razor, as I'm a man that enjoys shaving faster than the speed of sound. Now, all you do is get your piece of wood and cut a groove into the surface. Then make another cut here and put your sexually correct razor in. And this groove here will be the width of the plastic rope and your dunskis. Then I need some bottles. So I just went down to my local rubbish dump to collect them. And then once you have your bottle, you get it and you kind of thread it through and you grab the little bit that sticks out and you pull it. And voila, never ending rope. So just keep pulling it through until it ends. This is so satisfying. And you can do so much surviving with this rope. For example, all you need is the tab from a can and you can make a fishing line and hook. And another great thing about this bottle rope is it shrinks when heated, creating a super strong grip, which is great if you suck at tying knots like me. And you're probably thinking, that's stupid. What are you gonna do with that? As surely there wouldn't be any fish left in this post-apocalyptic world filled with plastic and pollution. And you are mostly right but there's still some species of the more resilient fish left. Yes, yes, yes. Finally. Ugh. Good day's catch, I reckon. And this is only the beginning of things you can make. Think this is a soy sauce bottle just floating in a creek. Wrong, it's the string for a bow and arrow. Think this is a bottle used by kids to sesh under train tracks. Wrong, it's a bowler. 
not to get confused with Ebola. 7-Up hey. Bottle? Wrong. It's a wig that allows you to become a lady of the night that seduces other survivors for money and then, if they tip badly, you can garrote them with the same rope and steal their supplies. Alrighty, so now we are really getting into the apocalypse. Bobby, Elon Musk and other billionaires have left in their spaceships to go terraform other planets and then destroy them. And the rest of us plebs are stuck here and we've started to wear bandanas and put makeup on, causing society to completely collapse. Meaning there's no electricity, no running water, and most importantly, no more YouTube. But none of that matters, as I watched a Troom Troom video before the internet collapsed and know how to make a life straw that allows you to drink water from even the dankest of puddles. Also, please don't get life straw confused with Nestle's Sipper chocolate straw. I've tried those for filtering water, but it turns out chocolate flavored E. coli is still bad for you. So all you need to make my life straw is some kind of tube and some kind of coal. I got mine from under the pillow of the Australian Prime Minister, but you can just get yours from any part of the burnt landscape. Then sand, rocks and somebody's pants. Then all you do is put the fabric at one end, fill about half of the tube with charcoal and the rest with sand and rocks and then place the fabric on the other end to close it up. And the idea here is when the water passes over the charcoal, the little holes in the charcoal capture all the bacteria in the liquid, I hope. And now you're ready to drink. Now, to test how well this works, I'm gonna compare it with a real life straw. And by real, I mean a cheap Chinese knockoff that I purchased from eBay, which is so good that it removes 99.99999% of bacteria, or 99.9% .9 of bacteria. I'm not sure which one. Speak. Hello, I'm here today yep. to drink my own pit. And one of the first warnings on the packet is to not use this to drink your own tinkle. Cheers. So, instead, we're going to use it to drink each other's tinkle. I got the better end there. Yeah, but maybe you're used to your own it's going to be. No, I'm definitely not. I haven't drank my own since I was like eight. You drank your pee? Yeah, when I was like eight. Yeah, I did the same actually. I not everyone, eight though. I was like six. Six? Oh. I'll go first I'm or? Kind of, I don't know. I'm kind of scared. I haven't got an, I can't get anything out of this one. It's, Why is your kind of sweet? It's <laughs> it's black. You're drinking with oh. charcoal. <laughs> but why is your sweet? Did you add sugar to it? I told you I went out last night. <laughs> Nothing? Nothing. Really? I'm bone dry in here. What well, does that mean that mine's a better life straw? If this one doesn't even work. Well, I would be dead. Can you not shake the pee everywhere? <laughs> Is it worth? Stop shaking oh, pee everywhere! I can't! Stop shaking pee on the microphone. I'm not getting when I drink it, but when I shake it, it gets pee. Stop shaking! So there you go. It tastes bad. But you have a perpetual clean water machine. You just pee in a cup, and then drink it. And then you pee in a cup again, and then you drink it again and you have never-ending water. How did Bill Gates not think of this? Yeah, Earth is really in its end times. The atmosphere is more greenhouse gas than air, causing global temperatures to rise so much that bushfires have popped up all around the world. All the trees in Australia have burned down, bringing much joy to koala-killing Australian politicians, who had previously cut funding to Australian firefighting services by 30%. And you probably have no idea whether I'm making any of these facts up or not. So I've put a bunch of sources down below, which I know the majority of you won't read, but they make me look smart. So yeah. And all these dead trees means there's nothing to do the photosynthesis and produce all the oxygen, which in my opinion is one of the tastiest gases in the world, which my family makes sure to eat at least once a day. But it turns out we don't need trees, as we can just make our own oxygen supply. All you need is bleach and hydrogen peroxide. Now, be careful when buying hydrogen peroxide, as it is a great way to get put on a security watch list. So what I usually like to do is when I get home from shopping, I'd go on YouTube and watch a bunch of hair dyeing tutorials or something, just to get them off my case. So now all we need to make delicious oxygen is mix the bleach and hydrogen peroxide together in a bottle with a balloon on top. And should you trust me? Yes, you should. I'm not a chemist, but I attempted to make shabs once after watching Breaking Bad. 
They kind of gave up and ended up selling some lads sugar and food dye. And Tony, if you're watching, I'm, I'm not giving you a refund. You bought it, you pretended you were high. That's your fault, all right? That's not on me. So a great way of working out that the gas forming from this reaction is actually oxygen is because it fills up this balloon, which I've written O2 on, and it also reignites a match, which is out. Look at that, pretty impressive. So then you just tie up your balloon and you have a little container of portable oxygen, enough to last your body around 30 seconds. So you just need to make a couple of these and you have a nice convenient way of carrying oxygen around with you wherever you go. Now you're more prepared for the apocalypse than the most veteran festival goer. And there you have it. If you follow these three hot life tips, I can 100% guarantee your survival during the global warming apocalypse. Meaning we should ignore what scientists have to say and continue along our current path of global destruction. As after all, I've shown that we are a strong, independent species that doesn't need any other life form to feel good about ourselves or to survive. Disclaimer, survival not guaranteed in any of these low-lying or seaside countries. Thank you so much for watching. If you like that, please subscribe and make sure to check out some of my other videos.